Hello again folks, we're going to talk about discus tank mates this time because I'm going to add some new fish to the discus display tank upstairs and now we need to get them out of here and take them up and we'll talk about why I think these are the best tank mates you can get for discus and possibly some of the other types that you can get and you can let me know what you think. So we're talking about sterby corridoras. They're one of the only corridora species that's happy at the temperatures that discus like. So they make an ideal uh, tank mate for discus. I specifically like them because they're always on the move. So they're always scurrying about, stirring up that substrate. So any dead spots that you've got in the aquarium, I find anyway that the quarries are really good at kicking that detritus up, getting it into an area of the tank where the flow can pick it up and get it out into the filter. Um, so that's why I like them so much and I've not had them for a while. I've had a bunch in this tank for probably a bit longer actually, probably for about four weeks now. Um, quarantining them because I picked these up from somebody um, locally, locally-ish from Sheffield. Um, so I've had them in here quarantining, make sure they're all happy and they're healthy and everything but life got in the way so they've been in here a bit longer than they needed to. So we're going to get them out of here, take them upstairs, but I'm also going to sh show you how I use these tanks. So obviously this is my fish room. I generally use these tanks for quarantining new fish uh, or breeding projects or something like that. So this has been a quarantine tank for the last few weeks. So what we're going to do is get the fish out uh, and clean up the tank. So I'll just take you through that. So first thing we need is some kind of receptacle to put the fish in. So I've got a little half bucket here. Fill it up with some of the water from the tank. Obviously we don't need to be too worried about acclimation because they're going in a tank which is getting the same water from the same source upstairs. The temperature is kept at the same temperature. And I've just spilt the water all over the floor. So let's get these fish out. I find the easiest way to do this is get the tank as empty as possible, then the fish will get nowhere to hide if you like. So I'll take out all this java moss. It's just making them freak out obviously. Put that in that tank. Then for fish like this I like to go for the old two net method. There we go, we've got nine. We did get ten originally, but one of them didn't make it. But they're all happy enough, so we'll put them to a side for a second uh, before taking them upstairs. But first I want to clear down the tank that they've come from. So, because this is used as a quarantine tank, um, what I like to do is give it a good scrub down, give the filter sponges a good squeeze out, drain all the water down and then I like to let it sit dry for at least a few days. Um, I've got no plans to use this tank for anything at the moment so it can probably stay for a week or so but that means anything that I have been quarantining, any nasties that have made their way into there, um, they're going to die off when it's dry and then I can use it again as a quarantine tank when I fill it back up. Um, these sponge filters, I've got plenty of them dotted around various other tanks so I can usually swap them out for new ones but once they dry off I'll pop that back into another tank to start getting seeded so it can be used again in the future. So I'll just give this a proper wipe down, um, a good squeeze of the sponge filters. Now like I said earlier this tank's been running for about a month or so. Before that this filter was running in another tank for probably another month, possibly a bit longer but just let's wait and see how dirty this is when I give this a bit of a squeeze. But I'll clean down the glass first. Uh, let's get on with that. So all the equipment I'm just going to move into the next door tank, like the heater and thermometers and anything else I don't really need. Because if I want the tank to be um, dry, obviously I don't want to run the heaters in it. I'll turn them off eventually, but just for now that will do. It's literally just a case of giving everything a good old wipe. Some ramsong snails in here that I'll grab up and move into another tank as well. As I come across them. Don't want 
to use a precious puffer fit. So that'll do it in terms of giving it a wipe down so the water's already pretty mucky. Let's give these sponges a clean and see how dirty they are. Oh yes. That's some lovely. So, you can see how effective even these old cheap old sponge filters actually are if they're pulling all this sort of crap out of the water and holding it in the sponge. And then let's get rid of this water. And it's pretty much as easy as that. I'll just leave that to dry out now, um, as long as I don't use it for a while. Um, I'll do the same with this tank, because this tank has some rainbows in, which I've moved down to this tank. I'll try to show you that. This is the tank that I've still not got round to fixing the lights on. Um, but we've now got a bunch of rainbow fish in here. These are the dwarf neon rainbows. Even in this dim colour, look at look at those colours. Look how red those red fins are. I think we're definitely going to get some breeding action in here. We've also got some thread fin rainbows in here. Um, these are quite cool. These fish. So this is going to be my rainbow fish planted tank, I think, for a while. But definitely need to get the light sorted out on it. Up here obviously we've still got the snail factory and um, we've just got snails and shrimp and all of these but look, look, we're duckweed free in many of these tanks and this little guy's finally decided he's got a taste for duckweed so he'll be getting back out into a big tank shortly Up here we've got the super red bristle nose you can just about see one of them there that guy there, I don't know where the hell he came from I'm sure I moved all the other bristlenose out of this tank, but he must have been hiding somewhere really, really well. And then we've got guppies, nothing, 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 saltwater tank. Still trying to get rid of these saltwater fish, well I'm not trying very hard I must admit. Um, but yeah, I want to use this tank for other purposes. So. Anyone want some clowns, damsels, hermits? Yeah, let me know. We've got the cherry shrimp tank down here, which is still doing really well. There are actually hundreds of shrimp in here. Um, and some of them are starting to look really good. <laughs> Have a look at this one. Look at the colours on that guy. Or the deepness of the red. There's a about a dozen or so that are that deep, deep, deep red, so this is doing really well, this tank. I'm really pleased with it. And then just more guppies and more shrimp. And then, of course, we've got the Pleco Paradise over here. Um, we did have several batches of eggs and males sitting on eggs. That one's currently got some eggs in there with them. There was another one in here with eggs, but that seems to have all gone south. I'm not sure quite what happened with that one. Um, but I need to get more caves, more wood, all that kind of stuff. I've actually got some more. Not traditional Pleco caves as such, but I've just got these little short pots, which I'm going to get the Dremel out and drill some holes in, cut bits out of, which will make some nice caves for things like small dwarf cichlids maybe, but let's see how the play goes like them, I'm not sure. But we can but try, see how it goes on. 
But anyway, we've got these quarries now. Let's get them upstairs, get them into the big tank before they freak out anymore. So, in terms of acclimation, I'm not really that bothered. I know the temperatures matches, I know the water is going to be roughly the same. So I'm just going to slowly release them in there. I'm not even worried about the water being dirty as such, like you would from a local fish store. So it's just a case of taking these and putting them in. So let's do that. All I'll do is lift the lights off. Lift the cover. Lock the bucket like so. We can just tip it in. So they're all in, they're all happy enough. The biscuits are looking hungry, so we'll probably best give them something to eat. The quarries are in, and if you can see along the bottom here, I'm not sure how well it'll be picked up on the camera, but there's quite a few areas that either the wave maker or the filter output, they just don't get to. And they accumulate algae or they accumulate poop or uneaten food or whatever it might be. And the quarries are really good at that. And you'll see some of them scooting around on the bottom here. And just for them, like, if it's uneaten food, they'll eat it. Um, if it's dirt or detritus or algae or stuff, they just stir up the sand just that little bit, just enough um, to make it get taken into the water column and carried away into the filter overflows. So they make a great, I'd say one of the best for um, tank mates for discus for the bottom of the tank. A lot of people will swear by clown loaches and they are pretty cool. So. I can see where they'd be coming from with that, but I think they get a bit too big. Um, some people have said that they have problems with clown loaches and discus, that the loaches will attack or um, outcompete the discus for food. The people that I know who have kept them together haven't said that, so it, it, it could happen, who knows. Um, so they, they seem to be the two front runners for your ground, ground dwelling, your substrate dwelling tank mates for discus. In the middle at the moment you can see I've got cardinal tetras. I have in the past kept rummy nose tetras and to be honest I think they're a little bit better than cardinals. Um, the rummy nose tetras seem to school together so well uh, and get out of the way a little bit better of the discus because a hungry discus will eat a cardinal tetra. Um, as you can tell by the dwindling numbers. Um, Roseline barbs, other larger tetras, Congo tetras also good for the middle of the, the tank. Um, basically anything that's not going to outcompete your discus for food and is just big enough to stay away from your discus's mouth, that's a good tank mate as long as it can handle the heat. I've also in here, which you probably can't see and I very rarely see them, um, is some bristlenose plecos. Uh, a lot of people hate them because they think they're messy. I think they do a great job as cleanup crew in here and um, they certainly keep on top of any algae spots that come around. I've also got some autos in here, um, some auto synclus. Um, because as you can see, I've had a little bit of an algae outbreak um, with some black beard algae on that piece of wood at the back and some hair algae on the, the plant there, which name escapes me. Oh the hell, I've had this plant for years. Why can I not remember the name of it? This plant here, which name escapes me for some unknown reason, I'm probably having a stroke or something, so I'll put it on the screen here when I remember it. Um, so I've got some autos and they are actually starting to make inroads into this. But again, I can't see any, any of them quite at the moment. Um, but they'll be around somewhere. So that's kind of my kind of hit list of what I like to keep with my discus. Um, the only thing I think this tank's missing now is either more of these cardinals just to get a bigger school of them or shoal of them or swap them out for something else or add to them with something else and I'm thinking something along the lines of probably going to go back to uh, the rummy nose tetras because I really like them but I might think on that a little bit longer and see if there's something else I fancy. 
So my question to you, and let me know in the comments if you will, is what are you keeping with your discus or what have you had best success with in the past? I'm always interested to hear everyone else's opinion, so let me know in the comments. Obviously give me a click, a like, a subscribe, all that jazz, or give me a dislike if you don't like it. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. And as always, thank you for joining me. I'll leave you with some shots of my discus, which I think are looking particularly fine tonight. So anyway, see you next time. Bye bye.